Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to explain how the problem of normalization can be taken in different ways. We're going to use the same exercise as I showed with compound keys in the header in the previous video. There'll be links from one video to the other in the, in the description. And use a completely different technique to arrive at what in the end is much the same result. Between other things, we're also going to see that we hit the same problems. So uh, let's clear the board a bit from the color tests I was making earlier. And the problem presents itself like this. At the beginning in the header, there is information about the cinema number and its name. got is a classic pattern with a header at the top, lines underneath for each one of the things explained here there are several films showing at different times. Now what's this? It is a screen of a cinema. Um, that In that place we have something that departs a little from the classic presentation of, uh, uh, of data. And what we're going to do to try and understand it is we're going to use a determinants diagram. I'm going to try and turn the lighting away to get less, to make it less shiny there. The, let's see about the number of the cinema. So number, it's one of those things that is likely to be a good key for something. And it looks like if I know the number of the cinema, then I know the cinema's name. So here, I don't know how clear this whole thing is, but I know a few things. Here, I can see that the name, number of the cinema determines its name, and I suppose it also determines the city in which it is. What else have we got? Uh, I'm confused about accessibility because it's not just the screen. It's also, we'll talk about it later because I want to do the easy ones there. And there's another easy bunch of uh, information here, which is that if I know which film it is, then obviously that determines the film's name and it also determines the film's duration. What about this date and time? It's related to this film, but also to this screen of this cinema. The four of them are somehow bound up together. And the number of bookings? Well, it's the number of bookings at this time in this cinema on the screen. If it was a different time, a different cinema, a different screen, then it would be a different booking, a different number of bookings. Let's see if we can clean this up a bit and present it, continue with it presented differently. I'm going to keep only the attribute names Still 
Marie Dei. Film name. And film duration. Can go here. We're interested in to date and time and bookings. Okay, I have removed all the values of attributes and rearranged the information that we have in a way that gives us more space. So the cinema number determines the name of the cinema and the city where it is. It's still not very clear how the cinema, the screen, the accessibility, the number of seats relate to each other. And then there's the film ID, which determines information to do with the film. And date, time and booking are also not terribly clear. Let's do something about the cinema number and the screen. The trick is this. To know whether this place is accessible or not, the, I need to know which place it is, and that is this screen of this cinema. In a cinema, there could be, you know, one screen that is in a room that is a bit older and because of that accessible through steps and so, well, not accessible. And so I need to know both of these things. When we have two things determining another, we say that it is a compound determinant a bit like compound primary keys and we use a tr tradition is to use a square to show it or right angle if i know this screen of the cinema it also determines how many seats there are there are small screens, small rooms with a screen, large screens, and that's the number of seats. Right. What about the date and time and the number of bookings? The number of bookings is determined by a lot of other things. If I know which screen it is of which cinema and when it is, then I know how many people are booking. Ah. Let me do some cleanup again. Date and time. A part of a large determinant. that tells us how many bookings we're getting. The large determinant is in this cinema, on the screen, at this time. So the three of them then, there are a certain number of bookings. Finally, in the cinema, at the screen and at this time, I'm showing a certain film. You might think, well, does it, is this how it is determined? I would say yes. If it's a different cinema, or a different screen, or a different date, a different time, 
then it would be a different film. Okay, it might by accident be the same film, but it would be an accident. I need to know these three things to know which film is showing. That's it. And now I know every potential primary key in my data. I know that I'm going to need a table for film information because it's the starting point of those two. I know I'm going to need a table for cinema because it's the starting point of those two. I know I'm going to have to have a table that uses cinema and screen together. And finally, I know I need a table for the triple. I counted four tables. Film. Cinema. The screen of that cinema. And finally, a certain date and time at which something is showing on a certain screen of that cinema, that would be a showing. In the previous video, I used the word performance. Right, yet more wiping and rewriting to be able to work out this in the form of a succession of tables. I'll start with film, it's an easy one. So film ID determines film name and film duration. That's a table of film with film ID as its primary key with film name and duration. there is the cinema information this is going to get confusing I'm going to place it up here I think there's the cinema table which has as its primary key cinema number and there is city cinema name I'll fill in the cinema name later because this gets messy cinema done almost oh I should do this film was done. Then there's the screen of that cinema with how accessible it is and how many seats it has. Seats and accessibility. cinema number and screen number as a compound determinant. Before I move on, something about how those two are related to each other. The, the screen is in one cinema and each cinema has got a number of screens. 
So we should see a relationship between those two going this way. Each screen in one cinema, each cinema in several screens. We've also got cinema number here and here. So one of those two is a foreign key. This one is the primary key of the cinema. So the foreign key is the other one. Oh, I can write here the cinema name. And close off that table. I'll finish this one off in a moment. And we're almost done. We're left with the performance. The performance, it was at one screen of one cinema at a given date and time. We have a certain number of bookings and we're showing a certain film. Okay, so it's at one screen of one cinema. That's cinema number, screen number. And to determine the rest of the information, I also need to know when this is. Date and time. A compound key made of three arguments, three attributes. This is the performance table. And we record the information about which film is showing. And how many bookings there are for it. What about the relationships between this table and the rest? and any foreign keys that are in use. We'll do film first because it's an easy one. The performance is of one film. So these two things should relate and each film can be shown multiple times. So multiple performances, there, many. Um, which means that this should be the foreign key. It's the many end, crow's feet, grab the asterisk. Or another way of looking at it, giving us the same thing. This is the primary key. This is the other one. It's the foreign key. What about those two? The primary key of screen is this pair, cinema number plus screen number. And here we have got Cinema number, screen number. So this pair here refers to this pair there. This is a foreign key that refers to the primary key of the screen. What does that do to the cardinality of that relationship or to the relationship between these two? Each screen's got several performances, many. And many grab the asterisk. Yes! Each performance happens on only one screen. Unless there's something very artistic and original to it. It's a cinema. They are making money. Each performance happens on only one screen. There. Oh, and that pair is the primary key over here. It's repeated there. Where it's not the primary key, it's a foreign key. So the rule is still working. And we've got a performance table. That's it. We've got all, we have all four. Okay, this work gets a bit easier 
when you don't have to throw away the work part way through. Here, to fit it on the board, I had to wipe things out as I was progressing. But we see appearing a number of things that are the same every time. Each cinema's got several screens. Each screen's got multiple performances. We have a hierarchy, and each performance is of one is is of one film. Performance acts as a link table because a film can be shown on multiple screens. A screen will show multiple films over time, and so the performance is needed as a link. So the usual kind of pattern are showing up, but we found them as a product of identifying the determinant in the form. How difficult is it? It was easier at the beginning and using determinants can be a good way of getting started. There always is a moment whether you use determinants or whether you use a normalization grid where things will become more difficult. In using determinants, the most difficult moment is finding every determinant for each attribute, identifying the correct one, and having a big wiry diagram that connects all the attributes to each other. Once that is done, you're then able to separate the different parts of that diagram and find out each of the tables from there. And that part is automatic compared to the normalization of the grid, where often the most difficult part is to make sure you've got the under-normalized form understood correctly and you identify correctly the relationships between things. Identify correctly the relationships between attributes. Whether you are normalizing with a grid or normalizing with determinants, that is your problem. That is what normalization pushes you to do. I hope you have found this example helpful. Remember that the same work is done using a different approach in the other video. So here both.